It is the chaos of this land that is truly disturbing to me, even more than its most titanic and vicious beasts. Animals are meant to be savage. Even when tamed, they are not truly civilized. But man? Man is supposed to be above the animal. Yet, the people here live in squalor and fight viciously over scraps like stray dogs. I have convinced some of them to band together under my leadership. And together, we have found safety and order. Unfortunately, they are untrained and lack cohesion. I'll have to fix that. Gaius Marcellus Nova. Victory through discipline. I'm reminded of my first command in Dacia. Many men question my rank, wondering why they had to follow a centurion so young. It took time to earn their trust, but it was necessary. I could not have even a single soldier questioning me in battle, lest our discipline fail. Without discipline, our century's formation would crumble, and the Legion would be exposed. It is the same here. These ragged men and women will not become a unit overnight. But I am patient, and more experienced than I was in Dacia. I may be far from Rome, but I know this for certain. This island will know its might. Training grew easier once my charges began to see the results. In fact, they found such a wellspring of enthusiasm that their drills and chores alone cannot contain it. This morning, I found a flag flying above the armory. It was the symbol of the Imperial Legion, but with one of the islands flying lizards replacing the eagle and words in a foreign language replacing SPQR. I'm told they say the new legion. I admit, I smiled at the sight. Very well then, it's time to find out if I've created true legionnaires. We march at dawn. I knew I'd chosen a soft target to test my men, but I had expected a little more resistance. The tribe we assaulted was young, but supposedly they had seen some success as raiders. I cannot see how, given how swiftly they fell into disarray. Some even attempted to flee but they did not get far. After scouring the fortifications for supplies, we raised them to the ground and planted our flag among the ashes. Let every savage and tribal pretender know, the new legion has arrived. I am finally satisfied with our defenses against flying creatures. The solution was obvious once I stopped thinking of them as special. With any foe, the goal is to control their actions. So instead of trying to block flyers completely, we created apparent holes in our aerial defense that entice attackers into kill zones. Our architect was grateful for the solution. He had been dreading trying to build a roof over the whole fortress. We have grown too large for that to be practical, and soon we will be larger still. Our first true war begins soon, and I suspect many Black Thumb shall defect before its end. It did not take long for me to grow accustomed to the weapons of this world, many of which are called guns, according to one of my lieutenants. They are far more accurate and deadly than any bow, but like any weapon, they are only as effective as their wielder. In the hands of the Black Thumbs, they are of no concern. In battle, we have been able to bait the Black Thumbs into attacking a wave of durable but disposable beasts before descending upon them with our main force. Our attacks are concentrated while theirs are scattered. That makes all the difference. The Black Thumbs are destroyed. Their leader was defiant, but his tribesmen did not wish to fight the inevitable. They offered us his head last evening. I suspect surrenders will be more frequent now. The Black Thumbs were the first, but they shall not be the last. Yes, I see it clearly. This is destiny. The gods have brought me here to bring order, to save these people from their own savagery. Janus 
pulled me across the bridge of time and space. Mars lent me his strength, and now I shall create my own empire in their name. I have allowed the Legion to take a reprieve from war, at least for now. We need time to gather our strength and plan our road to conquest before we march again. Augustus did not unite the Empire by rushing into battle after all. Such things take time, and more importantly, information. As I write, my scouts are mapping out the surrounding lands and observing any tribes that may oppose us. I have no doubt they are not all like the Black Thumbs. One could very well prove to be my Mark Antony, and when I find him, I will be prepared. While a prudent general must take his time to plan, I realize that comfort breeds complacence. So as my scouts range across the beaches and jungles, I have made sure to lead our main force out on regular raids. Our targets have been weak. Mostly small villages or unsuspecting convoys, but they resist enough to keep my men's instincts sharp. Letting them keep their meager spoils of these exercises has helped morale as well. Our actions have not gone unnoticed, however. My scouts say many tribes are avoiding our territory altogether now. Good. A fearsome reputation will serve the Legion well. Who could have imagined that a simple convoy would give the new Legion its first taste of adversity? Before today, the idea would seem absurd. They must have seen our approach, because just as we spotted our prey, we found our left flank beset upon by a pack of beasts. Though the creatures were smaller in size and number, they struck fast and struck together, and they never lingered. By the time we chased them off for good, the convoy was long gone. Impossibly. I spotted but a single rider throughout it all. Who is she? If Mars has blessed me, does Minerva harry me? No. I was simply unprepared. I will not be again. It seems that some of our neighbors have grown weary of our raiding. Today I received an envoy from the Golden Arrows, who proposed a lucrative trade agreement between our two tribes, with the caveat that we never encroach on the territory or convoys of the Golden Arrows or any of their allies. I have no interest in trade agreements but I do know how to seize an opportunity. So instead of accepting right away, I propose that we ratify the agreement with his tribe's leaders on a neutral site. I have planned long enough. It is time for the new Legion to resume its march. News of my rather definitive response to the Arrow's proposal has spread quickly, but few seem keen to act on it. Who can blame them? Without their leaders, the arrows quickly folded, and the new legion grew significantly in power practically overnight. The other tribes only managed to interrupt their cowering long enough to send another envoy. A man named Edmund Rockwell. Given the results of the last one I received, I almost didn't believe it, but apparently this man is special. The other tribes seem to respect him as a neutral party an expert on the island. We shall see. I did not expect much from Edmund Rockwell, but he has surprised me. He has a curious way of speaking, but he clearly possesses a razor-sharp intellect and a wide breadth of knowledge. Though we have only met for half a day, I gained invaluable information about this island, which is apparently called the Ark. I shall have to send a scout to pinpoint where Rockwell lives. In addition to his expertise on the Ark, he is known to create elixirs that have extraordinary effects. It would behoove me to keep those out of my enemy's hands. It seems I was not the only one who was skeptical of Rockwell's ability to curb my ambitions. The nearby painted sharks mustered up the courage to harass several of our coastal fortresses, but in doing so, they confirmed their nature. During their raids, they only attacked from the air and sea. 
they patently refuse to set foot on land. If the sharks are at home in the ocean, then I will pull our coastal forces back and attack their outposts on the mainland. Once their island fortress is cut off from the support and supplies, I can whittle it down to rubble at my leisure. The incident with the convoy was no fluke. The rider has returned, and this time he had plenty of warning. Reports of some beast queen joining forces with the sharks reached my ears days before the siege. The ranks have swelled since the convoy, but there is no doubt it is her. Not only did she help break the siege, but for the first time in his existence, the new legion is in full retreat. This cannot continue. I will not allow it. I will conquer the sharks, as I will conquer the entire Ark. But first, I must destroy the so-called Queen. Li Mei Yin, the Beast Queen of the Jungle. That is the name of my foe. It is the name that I have already grown weary of, but soon I will never hear it again. It turns out that she is a mercenary, not beholden to any tribe, including the painted sharks. So, as satisfying as it may be, I need not actually defeat her. I must simply divorce her from her employers, and I know exactly how to do it. The seeds of my victory are already planted. The Beast Queen is no longer a concern. It was a simple matter, really. A small team of legionnaires planted explosives at the Shark's camp in the dead of night while leaving hers conspicuously untouched. Predictably, the explosions drew the Beast Queen's attention, but the Sharks mistook her advance for an enemy attack. After that, it was only a matter of time before they parted ways. With that barbarian removed from the conflict, this land war will end shortly. We've already pushed the Sharks out of Legion territory. Soon, we will face them where they are strongest. The Open Sea. After taking the Painted Shark's last foothold on the mainland, this war has turned into one of attrition. While I construct a proper fleet, the Shark's resources will continue to dwindle, and my flyers will continue to harass their main compound. When we finally stage our invasion, their spirits will be broken, and their storehouses empty. In the meantime, I've been investigating this island's potential for naval warfare. Some sea creatures can carry a small ballista platform on their back, making them a curious sort of warship. I'm interested to see how they'll fare. Hopefully the sharks can offer a skirmish or two before their will breaks completely. Today shall live forever in the annals of history. Today I raise the new legion flag above the painted shark's battered fortress. And in that moment, my empire was truly born. In that moment, the new legion became the dominant power on this island. With that in mind, I've given my troops three days respite to celebrate our victory, though I shall not take part. My work is never done, and I mustn't lose sight of my true goals. Only when I have brought this island into a new age shall I be content. Only then shall I rest. When my scouts reported that they had finally found Rockwell's combat, I set out to meet him at once. While that meant delegating matters that others might find more pressing, I did not hesitate. Minds like Rockwell's are a precious resource on this island. To have him as an advisor would be invaluable. Whether Rockwell accepts my offer or not, my visit has already paid dividends. Apparently, he has spent some time researching the massive obelisks on this island, and theorizes that they may hold great power. If there is any chance that said power can be wielded, then I must learn all that I can about them. These obelisks are fascinating. Apparently, 
Rockwell managed to coax a response out of one of them with an offering of some kind. Could it be that they are some grand monument to the gods? If I appease them with a sacrifice, will they grant me their power? Yes, of course. Janus may have chosen me to rule this island by bringing me here, but I must prove my worth to the other gods by completing this ritual. Well, now that I have Rockwell's counsel at my beck and call, I shall pass this trial with ease. Then, the power of the gods will be mine to command. After studying my scout's reports, I have concluded that few tribes remain who can successfully resist the new legion's march. However, the island's snowy tundras are a matter of concern. The dominant tribe in the region, the Howling Wolves, are known to be fierce fighters. More importantly, a prolonged invasion would prove nigh impossible in that weather. Yes, for now I shall avoid the frozen north. Instead, I will annex the smaller tribes, consolidate the new legion's holdings, and investigate the obelisks with Rockwell. Perhaps their power can solve my northern conundrum. The new legion needs a true capital. One that embodies our strength and grandeur. I realized it while recalling my first day in Rome. My hometown in Numidia had its wonders, but it could never match the splendor of that great city. I was in constant awe. Most on this island are consumed by the present, their immediate needs and struggles. Yet a new generation will live within our walls one day. When they see what their forefathers have built, I want them to be as inspired as I was. I want to show them that no matter where they are born, their destinies are theirs for the taking. I have received disturbing news. Apparently the Beast Queen has resurfaced with an even larger contingent than before, and she is on the move. Worse still, she is traveling directly towards one of the obelisks. I can think of no worse scenario than the obelisks falling into those barbaric hands. She has always been a nuisance, but with their power, the Beast Queen would pose a dire threat to everything I have built. I must mobilize my main force and move to intercept her at once. The future of this island may hang in the balance. When my army arrived at the obelisk, I feared we were too late. The Beast Queen was nowhere to be found. I was about to order a search of the area, when I was blinded by a flash of light. Suddenly, the barbarian horde was right before us, and battle was joined. Though the savage possessed a fearsome new monster, it attacked ally and enemy alike. If anything, its presence made the slaughter more complete. By the end, the Beast Queen's forces were annihilated, and she herself had fled with mortal wounds. At last, a threat is ended. Interestingly, we also captured an acquaintance of Rockwell's during the battle. Perhaps she knew something about the obelisks that Rockwell does not. Walker had told us to expect some kind of monster after activating the obelisk, but I never imagined we would battle one of Ceres' dragons. No, that's not right. It was too colossal and wild, even for a god's chariot. I doubt Diana herself could control it. And yet, the new legion felled it. It cost the lives of many men, and even more beasts but it was worth the sacrifice. According to Walker, the third key we acquired may allow me to open this cave she speaks of. Then, the power of the obelisks and this very island will be mine to command. Damn these barbarians. They smelled our weakness. Between our battles with the Beast Queen and the Dragon, the new Legion's main army has been distracted and depleted. 
Lesser tribes have taken advantage by raiding our camps and seizing territory that we claimed with our blood and sweat. Fine. Let them have their temporary victories. Let them imagine that they have inflicted real wounds upon us. When I obtain the power of the obelisks, they will pay for every blade of grass they take from me. With that power, I will make them no true regret. My men are uneasy. News reached us that the Howling Wolves are on the march, heading straight for the heart of New Legion territory. Some want to turn back and defend our home. I understand the instinct. They lack my foresight. Only Rockwell has the strength of mind to see my vision. We are nearly to the cave. Once I hold the power it contains, I can use it to crush the Howling Wolves and their petty forces. Whatever gains they make will be erased. I'll unite the entire island in a single glorious battle. Soon they'll see, everyone will see. I am this island's destined emperor. I am its destined god. I had not expected to battle another monster, much less one so powerful. Yet here I stand victorious. My men lie dead, my beasts lie dead, yet I still stand. Even Rockwell has never seen anything like this place. Surely it is some hall of the gods. Surely the power of the obelisks is here, waiting for a worthy champion to wield it. With it, I will not need beasts or men. Its power alone will win me this island. I need only to find it and claim what is mine. Praise Janus for taking me here. Praise Mars for lending me his strength. I claim this great victory in your names. Gaius Marcellus Nerva. Victory through discipline. Nothing. How can there be nothing? I have searched ceaselessly, and yet I find nothing. I sacrifice my men, my kingdom, everything. I have nothing left to give. Everything I've bled for is gone. For what? For a view? What trickery is this? What is this place? Am I the victim of some divine joke? I don't understand. I served the Emperor loyally. Why would Janus pull me from his service, if not to bring order here? I've cried out for answers, but the gods never respond. They have abandoned me. All I hear is my own voice, echoing off these cursed halls. Betrayed. Destitute. And alone. Gaius Marcellus Nerva. Victory through discipline.
Hey everyone, my name is Ned, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more of this kind of content. This was the last island survival story, and it was also one of the most memorable. As we were approaching the end of filming, I started feeling really genuinely sad after the realization that we were almost done with the island story. That being said, these survival stories themselves do not have to be over. As many of you know, Ark doesn't have just one single map, it has a lot of them. The story maps, which the survival stories take place on, include the island, of course, followed by Scorched Earth, Aberration, Extinction, and Genesis Part 1 and 2. So I hope that at least puts some of you at ease. Ark story is huge, and this is practically only the beginning to my ambitions with this series. Lastly, thank you so much to my amazing team of volunteers, including Chips, who built most of these sets. Uh, definitely check out his channel, he does arc building videos, and of course, all of the body actors themselves. This series would be nothing without you all, and I'm really fortunate to be able to consider you my friends. To you, the viewer, thank you for watching the survival stories. If you would like me to continue this series, please show your support by subscribing to my channel and sharing the video around in the ARC community. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching again, and I will see you next time. Bye everyone.